It's called to order. We will start with Ms. Antezzo, please. I'd like to offer a prayer. Lord of all, us all, guide us in the right path as we make choices for our community. Inspire us to make wise decisions and grant us wisdom to be fair and honest as we serve the people of Stratford. Amen. Amen. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. Is there a motion to approve the minutes, please? Motion to approve. <coughs> okay, is there a second to the motion, Ms. Manis? Second. Okay. All in favor? I mean, dis discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? No. No, not opposed, or yes, no, you are nay. opposed? <laughs> nay. nay. Okay. Is there, okay. The motion passes nine to one. Okay. Uh, the next item on the agenda is ceremonial presentations and awards. Uh, I think it's respectful to do one of these. If we're doing one, to only do one each, each meeting. Uh, and um, Mr. Gresco. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to uh, uh, say thank you first off to uh, um, the administration and uh, uh, the mayor for their help in this. Um, as you all know, Terry was a, a mentor and a friend of mine, also a, an environmental visionary on behalf of our town, but he wasn't all about uh, or totally about Long Island Sound. Uh, this community garden project that he, uh, he began uh, with Robin and um, uh, over the years, um, it was an exceptional idea, and um, over the even the, over the course of the uh, uh, last summer, um, Terry and I and and Melvin took a walk through the uh, through the community garden, and he was very proud of it. So um, I appreciate the town and everyone's consideration in renaming this. Thank you. Okay, is there a motion to? I'd like to make a motion, please. Yes. Yeah. I accept. <laughs> Wait, no, he has to um, state the motion first. Make the motion. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to rename the farm of Stratford on Connors Lane in honor of uh, the late Terry Backer of the 121st District and rename it to the Terry Backer Community Farm of Stratford. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All against? No. Okay. The motion passes 10 to 0. <laughs> Madam Chair, may I say something? Uh, next item on the agenda is a council member's response to comments from the public forum. Okay, we will. St yes, Ms. Antezzo. Uh, yes, uh, I'd just like to agree with Walter Ribcunis. I wish they would fix the sound system, especially that horrible cracking noise. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other responses to the. I do. Uh, Ms. Manis, please. I defer to Mr. Juma. Would you like uh, to? I know traditionally we go in order of the seat, so. Uh, you don't have to. <laughs> first, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody um, who came out to speak today and everybody who's here. Uh, it's really important that we hear from you. Uh, this is a council that's going to listen. Um, whether they're Republican, Democrat, or, or Bull Moose, we're going to listen to you and, you, and please keep coming. Um, and uh, with all due respect to Walter, although uh, I do appreciate hearing from you, in the second district, we have our own Jiminy Cricket, and he's George Mulligan. So he'll be the Jiminy Cricket for the, for the second <laughs> district, uh, and, and I think he's going to do a darn good job. Um, uh, thank you. There you go. Um, uh, uh, Ms. Rodia, uh, you mentioned uh, naming something after Marcia Stewart. I don't know where you went. Um, that I absolutely think that's a fantastic idea. Uh, she's a former resident of our district. Uh, she's spent countless hours uh, helping our, our community and the environment. Um, I would full, wholeheartedly support that and would be happy to sponsor that when it uh, you know, is time for it to be on the agenda. Um, Shakespeare Theater, big topic tonight. Uh, and I appreciate everybody who came out. And there's one thing I think we can all agree on, whether you supported Elm Street 
or Stratford stage is we just want to get this darn thing done. Um, or some people, some people don't, my, my Jiminy Cricket doesn't. Um, so uh, I hope we can do that quickly. Uh, I think we've wasted a lot of time. Uh, but one thing I do want to acknowledge the mayor for and, and, and thank the mayor for is the mayor has said that he wants to give this council a chance to, to decide on that. And, and I appreciate that he did that. And, and, and thank you for your leadership on that, John. Um, I hope we do it soon. And I hope we have an opportunity for, for Elm Street and Stratford stage to, to present to us. And you know, we can make a decision whether it's one of them or not. Um, uh, whatever it is, I think we just need to move quickly. Uh, in terms of some of the, the specifics people are mentioning, uh, I know the deed restrictions, um, there actually are deed restrictions on the property. Um, I can, uh, it's not on my screen, but there are deed restrictions on the property going back to, to, to May 1954 uh, for commercial use of the property. Those deed restrictions are still valid. I, I've gone through the land records myself. Um, it is an important issue that we have to deal with. Uh, that doesn't mean that you know, one presentation is better than the other, but that's a legal issue we have to deal with. And one problem this town has had is we get mired in, into too many legal issues, and the lawyers are the only ones who end up making money. Uh, and, and I'd like to make sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, in terms of the contract, uh, yes, there may have been a contract that the town attorney, uh, the former town attorney almost at this point, uh, and Stratford State Troop agreed on, but it hasn't been approved by this council. So there is no contract yet. And the last draft that I saw of that contract, which may not have been the final draft, was, was you know, honestly not a very good contract. Um, and and it's, our, it's our job to make sure that we get the best deal for the town, regardless of who it is uh, that goes to work in the theater. So th those are two, two kind of the, the, the primary issues there. Uh, I know somebody also made issue with uh, the, the recording. Uh, again, my Jiminy Cricket beat me to it. There are cameras here already. I certainly have no issue. I think it's a good idea to have a sign up there to warn people. They should have been warned for the, you know, as long as these cameras have been up here. Uh, we have a, a cable provider for area two is our cable area. They have a, a pretty sordid history um, where they, they, they don't honestly do a good enough job for the communities. Uh, I hope that the town does pick this up. It would make my life a lot easier. Uh, and uh, you know, I just want to provide access to people. There are people who can't be here, including my wife, who's at home uh, with my kids, uh, one of them sick, and, and if they're watching, I love you guys. Um, so, um, getting to my Jiminy Cricket, uh, George, uh, you know, thank you for, for pointing those things out. Uh, I also share your concern um, about uh, the attorneys and all the money they're making, and also that there are, are some questions with our, our potentially incoming uh, town attorneys in terms of their relationship to this town. Obviously, they represent the Board of Ed, uh, the spouse of one of their partners is going to be on the Board of Ed. Uh, they make a lot of money off of this town. They also donate a lot of money to some of our campaigns. Uh, I think it's important that we get the money out of our politics, whether it's coming from lawyers or anybody else, um, and it's something we need to really consider. I don't think we should rush uh, to pick a new town attorney. I think we should think about what the best way to do thing is, things are with that office, and hopefully that's the case, but that may not happen tonight. So again, thank you for everyone who came out. We, I really appreciate it, and I know the rest of my colleagues do as well. Um, and I know one problem that I had when I was sitting in those seats is you'd go, you know, Stephanie Phillips would probably talk for probably as long as I did, and then the rest of the, the circle would say nothing. Um, and I don't think that you guys deserve that because you came out here. Uh, so again, uh, I hope to see you guys next month or at our next meeting, whenever that is. Okay, next is Ms. Manis. Hello. I wanted to thank everybody for coming out. Uh, it's nice to see faces stay after the um, public forum is over because you know we're going to respond to you. Um, I'd like to respond first to Mr. Bruce. Thank you for coming out. Um, you know, you're always an advocate and um, a voice from the other end of town. Um, th I agree with you with regarding the raises and I walked very hard. I could bring you the the flip-flops that have hor holes worn in the bo bottoms of them um, as we walked for that and raised awareness. And I know that that walking and working with you is one of the reasons I'm sitting here today. I'm specifically concerned about the, um, the voter registrar's office. That is a concern for me. It remains a concern for me. Accountability throughout um, town departments with the lawyers, the on-the-job training that was mentioned, um, the backroom dealings, uh, Ms. Palermo mentioned those things as well. I'm, I'm hoping those aren't an, um, 
anything to do with my party. I'm hoping those are just rumors. Uh, I, I, there's some of those things were things I had, people switching parties was news to me. Uh, but I guess that happens a lot around here. I wouldn't know. <laughs> um, social media and blogs and online posts, I think we all need to get used to them. I think that this is the way that things are. And i um, pretty savvy about them, and it's nice to hear and know most of these people out here. I know you by your handles online, and um, it's nice to see you out speaking and publicly standing up and not being anonymous. Um, and also the, uh, the mayoral form of government that was questioned, you know, that is a referendum. So that would be a change to our charter again. We know how to do that. So you can stand up and complain about it, or we, you can do it again. So <laughs> that's one of the things that I think we need to remember that we have the power to do change. And whether or not you think it's a great idea or not, but that we have that power and we've shown that we can do things like that in our town. As far as the Shakespeare project goes, I went to school for theater. I grew up with Mr. Hirsch in FunWorks <clears throat> doing the theater programs there. and. Um, you know, he was a teacher, and I, I know the Elm Street program is that professional theaters that I worked for in, in um, Westport um, with National Theater of the Performing Arts and doing things in the behind the scenes and all of these nonprofits and things like that. It, it weighs heavy on me. It's my background. It's what I know. And, of course, the Rooney's and Quinn's contributions to theater um, are spe <coughs> especially special to me. Um, having had him as a part of the Franklin School program that I did so many years ago when he was just a little boy. Um, I think that we need to find a way to mend all of this together and find a way to make Stratford whole. And Shakespeare is the flagship. It's not the dividing line. And it needs to be something that we hold dear. And I appreciate the mayor letting the council get their arms around this and understanding that the emotions are high and that you all care very deeply. And I believe together we can work it out Divided, we can do nothing. So I'm hoping that you will, um, that we can find some way to work this out, because until that happens, we will kill each other. And that's all that will happen. So um, Mr. Yates mentioned something with economic development regarding fire and police being paid more. You know, fire and police have many departments that are under their jurisdiction, and also mentioned economic development. I just want to point out to everybody that $248,000, 248, $248,000, $1,450 is allotted to economic development with regards to their line item budget. Um, Ms. Kaiser got up and spoke and presented quite a lot of information and gave us many digital materials regarding her department in a professional way. I've received multiple emails from both her and Amy Nora describing different things that they're doing, um, offers to join things in town. Um, I'm convinced that they're trying, and I think that you know walking through the brownfields is nobody's favorite thing to do, uh, and I think that it's hard work. But I think that we need to remain in perspective. So yes, okay, economic development, what's going on with it? What are, what's the commission? What's happening? But also to rem remember that that department doesn't have very much money as in it at, to begin with either. So when we look at line items, which I did a lot of this weekend, please remember that. Other departments, it might look like that in one part of the department, but the department itself has multiple de has multiple things. So that's something to remember. Um, as far as Mr. Cook's com conversations with housing, I'm very concerned that the elderly people in our in, in, in under, in, um, are feeling underfunded and they're feeling that there's issues with heat and electricity mm -hmm. and um, hoping to be a part of that housing authority and all of that and find out what's going on there uh, and support them. I know my my parents even tried to get into it, and the wait list has been closed for so long. This is something we need to look at as a community. Um, I thank Ms. Erickson for coming out. She's one of my constituents and speaking about SSG as well. Uh, Ms. Rodia for speaking about the Conservation Committee and bringing Martha, Martha Stewart way to our, to our attention, and also the Board of Ed. The fact that we spent 65, 65 cents on a dollar is important to remember because what does that leave for everything else? And I'm a teacher. I get it. So I think we need to start thinking about, we have a great uh, senior citizen population here. They are the majority of things. That brings me to EMS. I'm hoping those rumors are not true. I can tell you verbatim, it hurts me to hear that you ask, why, is, why are people coming forward and keep asking about EMS? Why does the council keep asking? Well, I want to know, and I can say this to EMS. People will keep looking at you when you're doing good because they can't stop looking at you because you're so good at it. So remember that. When they're, when they're talking about you, they're living some other poor soul alone, 
and it's because you're doing the right thing and you're doing something well. So I think that EMS has proven themselves over and over again. Many of my friends are a part of the EMS crowd and have been volunteers, and I think it's a great program in our town. Um, Mr. Patrimus with the budget and Ms. Elias, Mr. Mulligan, all the people who came out today, and if I missed you, I hope I talked about what you said. Um, I want you to know that this, the council's listening, I'm listening, I'm taking notes, and I'm hoping that you will remember you are the power behind all change. I'm one vote, and you can talk to me all you want, but if you don't come up and speak, there's, there's no shot. And if you don't eat my candy, I'm mad about it. So, <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Week. Is there anybody else who wanted to respond to comments? Uh, Mr. Hardin, then Mr. Kadeen. Good evening, uh, Fourth District Councilman. I'd like to address the EMS. Um, I'd like to put the rumor to lay. Um, I am one of the uh, council members who inquired about EMS. For those who do not know my history, I joined EMS in 1994 uh, from a Stratford High School. I was a student. I um, went through the Explorers Post. I became a supervisor, went through the ranks, won over 50 awards. The reason why I inquired around, about EMS is because, number one, I know EMS, I know the budget, I know the expenditures. Just as I inquired about other departments, and it saddens me that EMS has, you know, felt the need to come here and express their concerns, and it's okay, because other departments have done the same. Um, I will never dismantle EMS. EMS is one of the reasons that I was kept out of trouble and was able to establish a career in the medical field. Reality is that Things have to change in this town, and inquiries are made in order to make change. And I know that everyone will have their feathers ruffled because we are inquiring about certain things that acquire and where expenditures are. I'm a man of my word. I was chosen by the people of my district, and apparently I must do something right. So I'm asking again that if I, I apologize to EMS if they feel that way, but um, again, I've acquired other departments' heads and to see where their expenditures were. Uh, EMS, I applaud them for all that they do. I applaud the police department for all that they do. I applaud the fire department for all that they do. The Board of Ed for all they do. And the list goes on. But reality is that we are in a crisis and we have to inquire about what expenditures are coming in and going out, regardless of whether you save lives or put fires out or sweep the sidewalks. So again, before we make judgments and throw stones and you know attest to rumors, I'm a factual person. I don't move based on rumors. I move based on facts. This town has moved based on rumors and not actual facts. I believe in feasibility studies. I believe in things written down. And I don't believe in too many hands in the cookie jar. I appreciate everyone coming out tonight to support us. It feels good to have a crowd like this that we could hear you and you could hear us. It's a new change in the town council. And yes, we're not going to see eye to eye to everything we go across, but at the end of the day, we could say that we made an attempt to make a change. We've established the budget workshops, and they were put in place so that I could see the expenditures, just talk to the, the heads of departments to see how we can help, not to dismantle departments and make people feel uncomfortable and make people feel that we're coming after them. That was not the purpose. See, people are now being held accountable for what they do, and they don't like it. People now are having to answer to what they're spending, and they don't like it. So I'm asking the community to support us in this push to do what is right. Not what's acceptable from the old council or the old ways, but to do what's right. I live in this town. I'm a part of this town. My grandmother, my grandmother taught for 32 years at Stratford High, Ruby McNeil, retired and then died two months later. We have scholarships in her name at Stratford High School. I am a pillar of this community, so I would never do anything that would hurt or dismantle anything or anyone. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kadeem. Hello, everyone. 
I want to say it's really, really good to see everyone. Happy New Year's. Um, it's so important that you do come out to these public forums to speak before the council so that they have a better understanding of what's going on. Um, when you get a budget, <laughs> get a budget breakdown that looks like this, it's just numbers. <laughs> but when people speak to you about what's going on in their districts and in the town, it makes it come to life. Um, also, some of the people who came, I just want to say thank all of you for coming up and speaking because it takes a lot of courage to do that. Gentleman was speaking about the heat and, and, and the um, hot water and those different things that, that he's dealing with in housing. That, that should never be that way. That should never be a, a death sentence if you go live in how, public housing or any housing area that the town is responsible for. It should always be kept up and ran. A lot of people spoke on the Stratford um, sound, the, the Stratford Stage Group, as well as the um, Elm Street Group. And when you speak about the Shakespeare Theater, the passion for that is, is it goes many years. I've been here 18 years now, and everyone, everyone has been speaking about it, even myself, because I care about that. My son is an actor. He does great. Mr. Hirsch even cast him in one of his plays, two of those plays, and he, he was one of the leads. He, he did really great. But I have to say this, though. When you come to this level of being on the council chair, the responsibility is not just within yourself, but it's for all of you, for all of us, to have accountability to all of you. And I just want to say I look for your support. Um, EMS. I wouldn't touch EMS, police, any service. So whatever that conversation started, it didn't start with Mr. Wally Kadeem. I want to be plain about that, because they say council. If there's one person, then there's one person. Don't say the whole council. Ain't nobody else been talking about that. I haven't been. Um, and I don't have a history with EMS. So just to be clear on that, um, the Shakespeare Theater has to be open. I would love to see it open. There's so many different things on the table. And it's funny to me <laughs> that the council had it in their hand, whatever many years they had it, it should have already been approved, whatever it is, whether it's this or that group, it just doesn't matter. As long as the theater's open, I'm good. I'm ready to go sit down and watch everything. But the important thing is to recognize the importance of moving forward. Um, this council didn't have a chance to look at any of that paperwork. Don't condemn us because we don't know. Let us get the information and make a good decision. But it's based upon also those people who live in, in, in that particular district. We as council people should knock on the doors and ask, do you want a hotel? Do you want um, more plays? You got, we should ask that, because I, I wouldn't make that decision without saying, what do you want in your own backyard? I live 196 Larkin Court. They wanted to put the, the animal shelter there. I didn't want that there. I came out and spoke and fought against it. So I'm not going to say I'm going to put a hotel in your area or your environment without checking in with you. It may be good to hear different perspectives on it, but the fact of the matter is I don't live there. So I'm not going to choose left or right. And there's so much going on with the budget, I'm not going to take up the time and speak about it because we got to get to business. Um, but this is a sad day that we have to come to this level of having to fix the budget when we have a mayor and so many people at the staff that this could have been done a long time ago. And all the times we've been striving and asking for help, there has been no help. So this is all of us coming together, going through these papers. We haven't had any help. Madam Chair did a great job in arranging all the budget heads coming out, made it real public so everybody can hear what's going on in those different, um, <laughs> different budget groups. It's so important to know what's going on with the money because it always blows my mind how money can just appear. I don't, know, I don't get that. Same thing with the Bunnell Field. The gentleman was speaking about where did the money come from? I thought it was in a deficit. All these raises. How do we get all these raises? I thought we had no money. I thought it was broke. So I don't know how you can turn water into wine this way, but hopefully we'll fix that problem and get, get down to business and perhaps get the town back on track. So for your support, I'm so thankful to be here, and I'm thankful for everyone who came down. God bless all of you. Thank you. Are there any other council persons? Yes, Mr. Chase? Yeah, thank you, Madam Chairman. I'll, I will make it uh, brief, just a couple of comments. Um, Regarding the EMS, uh, I don't think any of our council uh, persons here uh, had made any decisions concerning cuts to uh, any department or agency. Uh, and certainly with the, as pointed out by Bunny, uh, EMS has provided a great deal of funds to our general fund 
for the benefit of the entire town. Uh, regarding Shakespeare, you know, I go back to 1996. I don't know if anybody remembers the musical, The Movie Man, The um, Music Man. Man. And I think uh, the star in The Music Man was a fellow by the name of uh, Robert Preston. Mm -hmm. And he played the part of Harold Hill. And Harold Hill came to this small town out west, and he was going to create this um, uh, entertainment for the town. And he was a flim-flam man. And I only bring that up because in 1986, another man came to Stratford, and his name was Louis Burke. And I remember sitting in the Stratford Library in 1986, and he had come up with these great ideas of what he was going to do with Shakespeare Theater. And then he asked for questions. And I stood up. I was a state representative at the time. And I said, yes, Mr. Burke, all this sounds well and good, but do you have the money? Oh, yes, I have the money. Well, we heard he had the money for a good 10 years. And I know one thing. As we analyze these proposals, to handle uh, or to um, revitalize the Shakespeare Theater, uh, I'm going to keep an eye on to make sure that they really do have the money to do what they say they can do. Um, regarding the, uh, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, regarding uh, the various. Um, comments that were made concerning uh, the town budget, cuts, the deficit, et cetera. Um, the mayor this afternoon issued a press release outlining some areas where he felt the uh, budget could be cut and we could, in effect, start to reduce the deficit. Uh, I look forward to hearing the mayor's report uh, on that and um, hopefully the, uh, both the council and the mayor can work together to ultimately resolve this issue we all face. Thank you, madam. Okay, thank you. Yes, Mr. Young. I'll be uh, short. Um, regarding the EMS thing and stuff like that, we had these budget meetings for a reason. That was to um, talk to all the department heads, get them to know them a little bit. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for providing that and for all of you guys for coming. And, um, it was a valuable lesson. I did not say and have not said that we were going to cut anything. We're trying, we're in a learning curve right now of trying to get this stuff down. Um, and it's gonna take a little while for us to get it. Um, so, you know, I heard no specifics of where we were gonna actually try to make cuts. So that's kind of uh, hearsay. Um, in terms of some of the other people who spoke, uh, the housing authority thing, um, that's gotta be corrected immediately. Um, people cannot be living with no hot water and electricity. That's unacceptable. And I'm not sure who to talk to about it, but it needs to get taken care of. Um, uh, in terms of some of the other stuff, Shakespeare, we're going to have to make a decision on that. I'm looking forward to it, actually. Um, it's something we need to learn more about and make a decision for the future of the town. I think it's going to be an excellent thing. Um, some of the other quick things, um, Uh, what was it? Yeah, some of the, in just some terms of some of the um, traditional things that we've seen here and some of the politics of, of the town of Stratford, you know, the mayor has his job. He appoints a town attorney, does that kind of thing. It's not as much our responsibility to take care of that. That's his decision, you know. Um, so we can't really go against that kind of thing. And if, if he makes, finds a qualified person, he makes a decision. So that's, you know, a valid thing. Um, we want to see more openness with the town government and with ourselves and hold everybody accountable. So uh, last but not least, I want to thank everybody for coming, and I look forward to seeing you every month. Thank you. Okay, thank you.
Mr. Young, uh, Mr. Llewellyn, please. I'll, I'll be brief as well. I just wanted to thank everyone for coming out, especially now that it's winter with the, um, the cold weather and everything and the people who joined us last week as well. Um, just to make one specific point to something Walter Rimkun has brought up with the uh, Benel Field House. Um, I've been involved in the Building Needs Committee for the last four years, and in any given year, there can be a couple, three, four, five projects that aren't done. And what happens is, is that money is reallocated to projects who can get done. Um, I think one of the things that maybe we need to do is be a little more transparent in year to year showing what specific projects aren't done and then the ones that do end up getting funding. And so that may be something that uh, we need to all work on together. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Gresko. First off, everybody, thanks for coming out. Um, it's nice to see a packed house and everybody's still here. Um, uh, Mr. Yates, uh, thank you again for, for your input. Um, I will be watching along with you uh, this uh, uh, project going down at Short Beach um, and keeping our eyes on uh, who's going to be paying for the renovations and more specifically the utilities. And then finally for the Shakespeare Theater, I agree with um, uh, Councilman Kadeem here. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't have information. Um, I can't make a decision that I can defend at this point. I need more information uh, and uh, hopefully we will get it in a timely manner. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And then, Ms. Antezzo, did, did you already? No. Last but not least is me. Uh, I'd like to thank all of you for coming out on this cold winter's evening. Uh, Neil Sherman, your comments were very disturbing that there were a number of people, five trucks taking down one tree, getting time and a half on a Sunday when the resident had asked for one branch to be trimmed. And before we know, I d God knows how much money we spent on deforesting your street. So um, that sounds like a real screw up to me. Uh, regarding Shakespeare Theater, uh, clearly we need to make the right decision in the long run for the town. That's going to be a decision that lives with us in perpetuity. And we are not going to, I don't want to rush in, into anything. And um, I think some other council persons feel the same way. Uh, uh, regarding uh, the town attorney, again, that's not our decision, frankly. Um, and nor were we kept, I know I wasn't kept, uh, I know I wasn't consulted. Uh, that's not to say that I think that the wrong choice has been made, though. Um, regarding the budget workshops and budget issues, we are really doing our best. It was always about budget modifications and looking for opportunities, and we will have more discussion on that as we go through this agenda. So if we can move to the next item, please. Uh, item 4.1 on the agenda is their movement to uh, accept the resignation of John Dempsey as alternate member of the Zoning Commission. So moved. Okay, I'll is there a second? second. To that? Okay. All in favor? Two. Aye. 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 All opposed? No. Nope. Okay. Uh, regarding this special election, this is a special election regarding the Zoning Commission. Uh, the date that is proposed is May 24th. Tina? Okay. Move to accept. Motion. Are you moving are you, the resolution? Yes, moving to accept the resolution. <laughs> okay. Joe? Second. Okay. So the resolution in front of me is resolving that the certification of the town clerk for a special election to fill the vacants to fill the seat on the zoning commission on May 24th, 2016, uh, is, would be here, hereby accepted. All in favor of that resolution? Wait, Ms., uh, Madam Chairman, if I could just ask a question. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, the um, the statute um, sets forth a, a time limitation of 150 days, and built into that is a enough time to allow the parties to nominate in any primary. So I just want to make sure that before you set that date, you've consulted with Mr. Marcone or Mr. DeCilio to make sure that those time frames are accurate. Those time frames are accurate. We did consult with Mr. Marcone. And Mr. Marcone consulted with Mr. DeCilio? Yes, May 24th. Okay. Yes, Mr. Chase. Just for the town attorney's um, edification, I also spoke to Mr. DeCilio, and he was comfortable. Okay. 
Thank you. Okay, all in favor of the resolution? Aye. 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 All opposed? Nope. Okay, let's move on to the mayor's report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, some announcements. Town Hall will be closed next Monday in honor of Martin Luther King Day. Uh, I'd like to congratulate the Stratford EMS uh, for establishing a new honor guard. They had quite the ceremony on Saturday, it ended up being a two hour event, and I got to tell you, uh, it was um, a real class act. Um, the whole procedure of uh, installing a new honor guard, honoring those who have served EMS, who have uh, passed away, and having family there and honoring them was a real tribute to our volunteers and uh, also to staff at EMS. So hats off to them to keep up the good job. <clears throat> I was also uh, notified that the EMS had, had done 500 more calls than they've ever done the last year, so the call volume is up. They're really kicking it, and uh, we did get a new ambulance across the street, so if anyone wants to go see it, um, please go over and visit them, the ask them questions, and From the outside. You, can, you can go inside and knock on the door and ask to go in if you like. From the outside of the ambulance. Okay, from, from the outside of the ambulance, you don't want to be in it, but you could actually look through the windows, but they'll, they'll open it for you. <clears throat> but they're doing a great job over there, and I'd like to pay tribute to them. Also, uh, we did hire a new CAO, Chris Timniak, who'll be starting this, next week. Uh, Chris is here this evening. Chris, why don't you stand up and... Say hello to everybody. Chris brings a, a wealth of uh, knowledge and information to the town of Stratford. <clears throat> and I look, I look forward to him starting and working with everyone here in the town of Stratford. Also, I'd like to welcome our new town attorney, Chris Hodgson. Chris, thank you for joining us this evening, and uh, we look forward to working with you. <clears throat> Chris has worked for us for the last several years. Uh, he, he's one of our labor attorneys, so he's um, great at that, and uh, we really look forward to him being an intricate part of our town here in Stratford. Uh, our budget has, uh, work has begun for next year's fiscal budget. Uh, first of all, hats off for you, Madam Chair, and the council for doing your workshops and kind of diving into it early. Uh, we made our staff available. We try to answer as many questions as possible on such a short notice, uh, but I'm glad to hear that the council found it rewarding and informational. I can only tell you this is that uh, it's, and I, when I spoke to all of you when you first got in, it's going to take time. And that's, um, there's a learning curve uh, regarding operations in town because there's a lot to know. Mm -hmm. And what doesn't seem right sometimes when you ask the questions, you're like, oh, I didn't know that. Then you, you find out more and then you realize that um, for every action, there's a reaction. And, um, you know, it's, it, it's not always what it appears to be. And that's why I always say make sure you ask the questions just to find out the other side. And um, even with Public Works, I heard that. They removed the tree on Sunday, and um, there was overtime incurred, but there was probably a reason for it. And um, You know, talk to Public Works or give us a call and find out, and you'd be like, I didn't know that. And, um, but there's, there's no more reason for things, and <coughs> I'm just thankful that uh, most of you uh, participated, asked some questions. We're going to have more workshops um, with the new budget, so you'll be a lot more experienced now going into it. And then gonna, I think you'll probably ease, breathe a little easier, and uh, uh, as time goes on, you're going to see more and get to learn more. And, I, I welcome that. Uh, I have a proposed um, some suggestions to the council regarding the uh, current fiscal year. Uh, under questions, I'd be more than happy to answer those questions for the sake of time. Uh, but I thought it was necessary to, to come forward and make some suggestions to assist you, and I think you were waiting for that. And uh, Tina, I could um, thank you for giving me a little nudge there, too, as far as coming out with some, some suggestions. When I had uh, our finance director in this morning, to get an update on our deficit. Um, she had reported that at 5.4 million. <clears throat> we felt compelled to move a little earlier to come out with some suggestions. We will have more over the next month. It's just we want to make sure that whatever we give you is accurate and also useful. So I'm not <coughs> going to suggest things and then they're not going to be true. Um, there are going to be some other options coming forward, which I think will put you at ease. Um, but I want to make sure they're correct before just throwing it out and having you think we're heading one away or have potential when in fact it may not um, be able to become reality. So uh, <coughs> we are working on that this week also, and as we get the information, we'll present it to you. But we are preparing for the budget uh, for next year, and we'll be doing that over the course of the next two months. Um, as far as the sound system is concerned, uh, we have had problems with it, and I will have Public Works look at it, so my apologies for that. That is all, Madam Chair, at this time. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, okay, appointments? Not at this Mayoral, time. Um, Okay, I'll ask the questions later. Committee reports, there are no reports that were submitted. Uh, hopefully that will change as we appoint new committees and we would like the new committees to submit reports <coughs> quarterly. Um, so we will have reports from committees to discuss. The town attorney's report. 
Yes, Madam Chairman. Um, first of all, 5.3.1 claims report. There is none tonight. What we try to do periodically, usually every quarter, is to update the council on any claims that we've uh, settled or resolved, either through settlement or through trial, uh, during the previous quarter. So um, I'm not quite sure when Tim gave the last one, but we'll try to put something together to, to uh, uh, bring you up to speed from whatever the last report was given to, to probably the next meeting. Okay, thank you very much. The next thing on the agenda is the 216-218 King Street. Yes, Madam Chairman. Uh, uh, Attorney Jackson is handling that, and he informs me that that will not furnish any business tonight. Okay, so Wally? You move to table? Okay. Second. Okay. Okay, all in favor of tabling? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Town of Stratford versus Daily Development. Yes, uh, uh, Attorney Kelly's office is handling that, and I have not been contacted by them, um, so that will also not furnish any business tonight. Okay. Wally Kadeem, um, table, move to table it. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I have a question. If it's already on the table, why are we tabling it again? These items aren't being taken are. off the table. I'm sorry? These items aren't being taken off the table. We could literally just go through the reporting and... Yep. Stratford Festival Theater contract? Yes. Uh, Attorney Jackson is present, and I'd like them to come up and give you a little bit of an overview as just to what's happening on that situation. I don't think that any action will be required of you tonight except uh, for informational purposes. In that case. You said you wanted to bring Jackson up now? Yes. yes. Although it, we don't expect any movement on this tonight. No, this is just for informational purposes. Okay. Fine. Good evening, everybody. Bruce Jackson. <clears throat> um, I was working with the prior <clears throat> council with regard to the Stratford Theater Group contract. Into the mic. Oh, you can't hear me. I'm sorry. It's too short for me. Um, the, the, it, when I was working with the prior chair, we had had uh, discussions with Stratford Theater Group's attorney. Um, the proposal was for them to come in, renovate the theater as well as the White House. Um, the way the contract was reading at that point in time was they would come in, they would show uh, evidence of their ability to pay, they would show, get all the approvals. Once all of that would happen, then they could begin with the construction of the theater. Um, they did propose as part of that a hotel, but anything, if the hotel was done, would have been done after the, after the completion of the theater would be done. They could not even begin construction of the hotel. The, you're correct that you never saw a copy of the contract because uh, the prior chairman never thought it got to that point and there were still some open issues at the time that they left. So there are still some <coughs> open issues, which is why we're not producing a contract. And I guess you all have to look, and look at forward as to what the, the provisions of any contract you would want to enter into would be and give us instructions as to how that contract should read. Thank you very much. Any questions? Attorney Jackson, what are the open issues? What's that? What are the open issues? Well, as I said, well, initially, the first issue is that you're a different council, so you have to tell me what the provisions of the contract would read. So, for instance, as you said something about the hotel, if, if you feel strongly there shouldn't be a hotel, then that would be something we would add in. Uh, other issues out there were somewhat minor. For instance, one of the questions was, is it a lease or a license, a minor distinction? But we were going back and forth with the other attorney as to those terms. Um, so again, we never quite got to a point to present to the council a final contract because there were still some issues open. Okay. Ms. Manis? I have a question really quick. Two. One is, um, are we guaranteed that there will be no litigation from the covenants and all that? I've read that, but I've read conflicting reports and from both from credible people and sources. That's my first question. The second question is, if for some reason this, we, are not, we do not vote to go with SSG, are we setting ourselves up for that kind of litigation as well? Can you answer those questions? I, Mr. Florek, I think you'd probably be better at that part than me. 
question is whether if they don't go with SSG, whether it'd be litigation. Well, I, 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 I don't know. Um, um, that's something that uh, we can analyze, but I wouldn't talk about that here. If you're going to talk about that, that's probably a subject for executive session. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, the covenant, the, you've looked into that? Look the deed restrictions. Yeah, the deed restrictions. Uh, there are deed restrictions on the property. The deed restrictions are that it has to be public use and it cannot be more than 20%. The deed restrictions under the current use probably would not be violated, but that was one of the questions we were still looking into. As you said, one of the questions is how those deed restrictions would affect the use of the property. Okay. Yes, Mr. Chase. Yeah, one question. Please. Uh, yeah. Did you say the negotiations were still ongoing because uh, a number of people have indicated that the negotiations were done, it was ready for signature. What is the case there? They were, the reason it was not presented to the council on the special was that we were still working on the details. It was not completed. It is still not completed. Okay, thank you. It was speaking about, excuse me, it was speaking about the um, property itself not being for um, commercial use. I mean, Where's the clarity on that? The, the deed restriction, give me a moment, I'll get you the. <coughs> the deed restrictions are that the reservation in perpetuity that not less than 20% of the property remain is open space and that they allowed access to the general public. And those are the two deed restrictions in the deed that I've seen. But the question is, for instance, if we have, if we give the use of the theater to a private group, does that somehow <coughs> restrict the public access? And we haven't gotten an answer to that yet. Another part of it is um, when you were stating that it was a park, someone said it's a park, but you just said deed restrictions just implies it's, that it's 20 percent. Open space is all it's Open that. space. And, and what, is, what is the, um, how you say, what support do you have or how can you then say public space becomes now a, um, a operating business like a hotel. That's not. That's 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 um, that's a business earning income. So it's not really for like if you go into a park to enjoy the grass and see the sunlight and everything and the little water shimmering off there. Um, if it's owned by someone, it's not, it's not public space anymore. In the fact that you can rent it, a room is not the same thing as public space because it's a business. They're not giving it to you. You can't sit on a bench and enjoy yourself. Well, actually, the way the agreement reads, if if, if the agreement were to come through, the agreement reads that. It would be used, like if you wanted to go sit on the front steps and have a picnic, the agreement allows for that. What, what we hadn't gotten through yet was whether or not there is any restriction of the open space by basically giving a license to an organization to operate a theater. Remember, the part of the question of lease versus, lease versus license had to do with whether or not we were giving them a, 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 a non-exclusive use, which is a lease, or a license, which is... Uh, excuse me, lease is a exclusive use, the license is not exclusive, exclusive use. So if it's a non-exclusive use, then that means their use of the theater and the and this grounds were in conjunction with the town and not excluding anybody, any citizen. But as I said, sir, that we hadn't come to a final conclusion on any of those terms. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, you already asked if there were other <coughs> questions. Mr. Gresko? Are there any concerns about the property being part of either a state or town historic district and what kind of ramifications or restrictions, for example, uh, putting a hotel on what would be considered a historic piece? <coughs> well, we had, the, the agreement contemplates not that they can put a hotel, but they can ab ask the zoning and, and the, the town for the permission to put it on. <coughs> we have not agreed to allow it. We've agreed that they may make application, and if the through the application process, the zoning and all the other commissions for the town were to agree to a hotel, then that's fine. But we have not committed to anything from our from the town's perspective. We've allowed them. If this, remember, keep in mind, we never finished it, so it's not like I'm producing for you an agreement for you to sign. So there are a hundred open questions, and you are going to come up with a hundred more, and that's just fine. That's part of the reason that Mr. Kubik never went through because we got to a point where we couldn't in good conscience say it was done. Mm -hmm. so, to, so in that case, your question was, can they put a hotel? And the answer is they can make, we've given them the right to make an application and the zoning board may say no. And if the zoning board says no, then the zoning board says no. 
I look forward to be able to give you, you know, hear your thoughts on what you would like the contract to say and what, how you'd want it to work, and then that's what we'll work into. Excuse me, I, I had one question, if other people don't. Um, we had heard in the public forum that a contract had been signed. I believe, I, I can't take notes lately, but I believe I heard that a contract had been signed by uh, one of the town's attorneys and that we were, they were just waiting for the council to approve. That is not the case. That is not the case. And Unless somebody has a copy of it that I haven't seen, I'm in possession of the only one I know of, and that's not signed. Okay. And nor, was it, it, nor could it have been signed absent the town council's authority to sign it. So any representation that Stratford Stage Group has made that they have a contract with the town is inaccurate? We sat down with them. We came up with a, a format. We came up with some ideas. But until it goes before you, the body that makes the decisions, nothing is set. Okay, thank you. I have Mr. Duma? Two questions for Attorney Jackson. Could you provide the council with the most recent draft of the, not necessarily at this moment, uh, but the, uh, <laughs> yeah. the most recent draft? You could give it no, to the chair. No, you would have to provide it to all Through of the us. chair, please. I'll provide, I'll provide it to through, you, you could do that through the chair. Uh, second question is you're referring to deed restrictions. There are a number of deed restrictions on this property. Which one are you referring to? Um, I don't have the deed in front of me, but there is a particular deed that talks that has two specific, it was the one from the state, if I recall, the one from the state to the town had two specific deed restrictions. Are, are you familiar with the 1954 deed restrictions, restrictions from Housatonic Properties? Uh, I've seen them, but it wasn't really clear in there. You have to go get a survey. That's one of the questions we had was where those survey lines run, because the survey lines, it talks about a legal description, but without the ability to attach it to a map, I'm not entirely sure where the restrictions run. Okay, thank you. Bruce? Yes. I was actually involved with the transfer of that property and conveyance bill through the state of Connecticut. The way the deed was structured was open space was a priority that 20% of the site should be reserved for open space, <coughs> current with our zoning right now. Uh, also that the town should make its best effort to keep it for theatrical purposes, realizing that in worst case situation, if no one ever wanted to take this over, the town shouldn't have to be stuck with a theater that nobody wanted and that did have some options. So ultimately it's going to come down to this body to decide what the path is or the future of the theater. And when you asked about the lease agreement, well, I was given the charge to negotiate with the, the person that was selected by the council, but that's, that was where we were left off at this point. So it's going to be up to this council to really decide uh, which, which venue you want and how you want it structured. So you're going to have a lot of input on that. And we appreciate that, Mayor. Thank you. Sure. Uh, Mr. Thank Chase? You, I move to table. A second. Stay there. Okay, all in favor of tabling? Aye. Aye. Okay, all opposed? Nope. Okay, 16 Goodwin Place. That will also furnish no business tonight, Madam Chairman. Okay, thank you. Um, table. Motion to table. Okay. There's no one. Second. There are three different seconds. That's fine. Uh, all in favor? Tabling? Okay, short. I, I'm sorry, 576 East Broadway? Yes, Attorney Jackson is also handling that uh, proposed sale. Um, I understand that may have some time sensitivity to it, but doesn't have to be acted on uh, tonight. But I'd like Mr. Jackson to give you a little bit of an overview of what that's all about. I, I just want to say, uh, just to clarify, that especially for things that are time sensitive, in the future this council needs uh, documents on projects. So contracts need to be provided by the deadline. Uh, and please be aware that the deadline for the uh, for the agenda has been moved up. Um, so any documents relating to something that we, we need to have a chance to review. So in the future, um, we aren't going to all just do this verbally. We need to have documents, please. Okay, Mr. Ja uh, Attorney Jackson. So this is a property that the town foreclosed. It's a brownfield property. It's uh, EPA has agreed to do a remediation on the property. As part of that, we put out an RFP and we had one particular buyer come in and say they would be a buyer of the property. We have entered negotiations, but partly because the issue was that we had to negotiate with both the buyer and with EPA. So there's a contingency that once this body decides whether or not to sell the property, they've got to make an agreement with EPA. Now EPA will come in and do the remediation, which they value at around $4 million. Uh, we, the town, will then, uh, the, the, the potential buyer will have, as part of the remediation, will have to come in and put in special subsurface uh, uh, structures in order to hold a building, because apparently the ground is very wet or very soft. So part of the, dis the issue is, is the buyer's got to work with the EPA and put money into the property prior to it being completely uh, remediated. 
Uh, they have entered into, uh, they're in the middle of getting an agreement with EPA. The contract would, once it's ready for signature, would involve the, the town basically agreeing to make a sale to these people subject to the EPA agreeing to do the remediation. One of the holdups was we were waiting for EPA, who has a lien on the property for their remediation, to make an agreement with the town as to the release of the lien. Uh, just the other day, we got a letter from EPA. We had asked that we get reimbursed for the full value of our taxes and, our and, and all of our costs, which was approximately $400,000. EPA came back and said, well, their general rule is they do it in percentage. They're putting in $4 million, we're putting in $400,000. Would be a four to one reimbursement on the 500,000, but in this case, they were very nice to say they would split the 500,000 equally. The town would get $250,000 towards its taxes and a property back on the tax rolls already being remediated versus the, the you know, having a property sitting there with no ability to be go forward. Uh, for information, if the project were built as, re as <coughs> the potential buyer would like to build it, the tax revenue should be approximately $100,000 a year. Okay. Mr. Chase, is this currently wetlands? No, I don't believe it's wetlands. I think it's I think it's 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 Raymark waste. Uh, but apparently they they said the subsurface soils are very soft, so they can't once they go through and do it. Somebody's going to have to put a frame underneath there to be able to hold the weight of a building, or it's just always going to be empty. Okay. Um, so I know where the spot is, and that that building's been empty for quite a long time because of the that that area is pretty bad. The question is, is that um, with all of the super fun stuff coming through that hopefully we will start moving on, does this business understand this coming in? Do they understand that this isn't just a local problem in their, in their little corner of the sky, that this could impact all other areas of town and impact their business or their traffic flow or, you know, I think it's a, a moving a storage facility, so large trucks coming in and out, you know, to move things. Do they understand <coughs> they're going to be buying into us? Do they know what they're buying into in the area? Because of their nego I, I don't, I can't speak for them per se, but I do know that they've been in negotiations with EPA for a very long time, so I have to think that they at least are somewhat aware of EPA's plans all over that area. But I can't, I can't speak to what the buyer really believes. Ms. I, have, I have a question. Um, did you say $4 million? EPA is anticipating that their, their remediation <laughs> costs will be about $4 million. For that property? For that property. Do you happen to know if that also includes their approach to the Raymark waste in general? Is it part of it? Is that four million part I of it? I believe that is part of it, but I, I can't speak for EPA directly, but I believe it is part of that bigger project. Because the presentation we saw, that property was not mentioned at all. Hmm? Raymark Waste. It is. I tell you. It is part of that. Anybody else remember it? I it is. <clears throat> it is. It, and it was like the airport property. They they remediated that site when they <coughs> and they moved Main Street. So there are sections that if they can remediate uh, immediately, uh, they, they will. It's, it, they just haven't had an opportunity to do a lot of these, uh, but this one has been on the radar for some time. They've been doing a lot of um, work with the Army Corps and with the state of Connecticut and trying to get a, a plan in place and, and get a developer they can work with. Uh, but the EPA does have the money right now in their account. I believe it's approximately $20 million that's in reserve for Raymark yeah, Waste. Yeah, I, I understand that. I went to several of their meetings. What I'm trying to find out is that since this East Broadway piece of land was not on any of the uh, parts of land that they were t talking about. I'm trying to find out whether this $4 million is going to come out of the general EPA amount that it they will. said they were it, going to remediate the old Ray this will, ball this, field. This will come out of the $20 yeah. million because what, what the EPA is going to propose, um, they will have to request a, a substantial amount of money from the federal government to do the comprehensive plan they're looking at. But they do have money right now to do some remediation, and, and this, would, this is one site that they can do now, and they've been working on because they felt as though it was right. something they get their arms around. I, I don't know who can answer this following question. Where does that waste go? Hmm. They're not going to move it. They're going to cap in place. They're going to cap it in place? Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, even though, they, they, you know, this, excuse me, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Mr. Kadeem. Yeah, even though there's a lot of information that a lot of us really don't have, I move that we table this and have a better understanding of what, what we're actually voting on. Well, that's what was our understanding. Second. 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 The second. 
Okay, all in favor of tabling? Aye. 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 All opposed? And Attorney Jackson, do you think you could work with Gail and Carol to pony copy that contract out to the council members? Absolutely, we'll go out tomorrow. And please understand that this council is new. We would also need background documents. It's very hard to approve or disapprove things uh, verbally. We really do need to see the documents so we can do our own work <coughs> for these meetings. Yeah, yeah. Yes, ma'am, I'll, I'll get you everything I can. Thank you. Okay, next item on the tape, <laughs> next item is the lease uh, uh, regarding the Short Beach Golf Course concession. And yeah. again, the lease was not provided by the deadline. Yes, Madam Chairman. And again, Attorney Jackson is involved in this. And I'd like him just to give you an overview of what's happening, again, with the stipulation that if, if there is a lease that, that this council needs to be approved, that it be ponied out for the next meeting. It will be. The, uh, the question on this, this <coughs> thing, I think, Mr. Grespo, you said, uh, the issue was when the original council had agreed to this, there was an RFP, they came in and made an offer, but the lease was, there was not a lot of lease terms in there. And I'm asking the council to give me some advice as to what lease terms you would like to put into the lease so that I can make sure they get into the final lease. So I'm going to look for some guidance as to you, your question was on paying utilities. Uh, I just have a what was in the RFP was an annual lease amount, but there's a whole lot of open questions that we don't have answers to. Is this for the restaurant? This is for the restaurant, the not? concession. Okay. For the restaurant, yeah, not a concession the con stand. Yeah, concession okay. stand. It goes, they have a concession stand down right, by the, right off the water there. And you know, by the right, golf course. Okay, so those are two different things. Concession is one thing and a restaurant is a whole different thing. So what are we saying? Is this a restaurant we're only talking about? This is, well, this is going to be the Short Beach co Golf Course uh, Clubhouse and Liquor Concession. Clubhouse and what? I liquor hear. Concession. Liquor? Yeah. Well, that's the, that, again, this is what I'm asking. Concession. I need guidance from, from you, okay. the council members. Can I, can I suggest that perhaps you meet with the two council persons who will be on the Short Beach uh, Commission? Absolutely. Okay. <coughs> and that we divvy it up that way? At, at least to work with them to work out terms and then... Bring it back to the council. Then I'll bring back a, a lease when we get to that point. Ms. Manis? I have a question if this, regarding the, the lease. Can there be a lease within the lease? Let, for example, meaning this, this group that is going to come in and build the restaurant. I know within the plans there's this little pro shop that is going to be there, and I'm wondering if parts of it can be like sublet, kind of like a, like a pro shop, like a Darien um, sports shop could come in and kind of have a place in there. Is that just going to be up to the person holding <coughs> the lease, or would that be part of us? Like, uh, would we break it, it, it up? It depends on who would like to offer that up. If you, I would not. If you were going to separate, I would have the restaurant people do the restaurant part, and if you wanted to open up a different section for a different lessee, that would be fine. I would not give them the control. Right now, the lease says if we award it to one particular group, that they are not allowed to sublease it to anyone else okay. without the council's approval. Just because if you bring in one particular. Uh, group that you want to work with, we don't want to find out we have somebody else in there. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Now, go ahead. Yes, uh, Mr. Gresko. I, for one, like to go on the record saying that uh, if, because uh, when we asked the, the Public Works <coughs> Commissioner, he said uh, the lease negotiations were still ongoing, as you've said. I'd like to go on the record saying that if uh, I would not like to have the town paying for the utilities for whoever the vendor ends up being. Um, uh, in the future. I mean, that's what I've heard was going around, and in the fiscal climate that we're in right now, I don't think that that's a good idea. We, and we were just coming to you to ask what terms you want, because I, you guys tell me what the terms are. That's one of them. <laughs> I, I agree with that. I agree with that. Also, like, um, because, because of the fact that it's a restaurant with a liquor license, that's supposed to um, be something that's normal when you go out and play golf. Should we have drunk people playing golf and fighting on our grass? I mean, what is that? Is that normal? I don't know. That's pretty That's, normal. Yeah. Yes. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. Come on up to Lyman Orchards. Like it's it. awesome. <laughs> okay. Is there a motion to table this? Motion to table. While Second. We're... Okay. All in favor of Thanks, tabling? Bruce. Aye. Thank Aye. you. Uh, okay. Now we go into executive session to deal with Conway versus Town of Stratford. Yes, uh, Madam Chairman, I would request a, an executive session. Uh, that's a pending claim against the town, and uh, so we need to discuss that. The um, the uh, participants should be the members of the council, of course, the mayor, 
Mayor's Chief of Staff, Town Attorney, myself, Attorney Cotter, who's actually representing the town on this claim, uh, Ron Ng from Human Resources, and Sue Collier uh, from Finance, uh, because it's going to affect both of their uh, departments, and they, uh, I believe, will have uh, something to say about it. Okay, thank you very much. So Ma I'll move Madam to Chairman, go into executive session. Point of information. Uh, Attorney Clerk, what uh, testimony will the Chief of Staff be providing? Because he's a, a part of the mayor's office and because he works with the town attorney's office uh, and the mayor uh, in regards to these matters, uh, it's been my experience that very often in discussions that take place in executive session, he has something to add, and uh, I would want to take advantage of that. Okay. Move to go to his executive session. Move. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Let's go. No. Are we set to start? Okay, the, we went into executive session regarding Conway versus Town of Stratford. Mr. Florick, did you? Yes, uh, Madam Chairman, I think what would be in order, if it's uh, the pleasure of this council, is a motion to accept the recommendation of the town attorney and then a vote. I rise to a point of information. Council, is it appropriate to have that motion under the Freedom of Information Act and not actually disclose what we're voting on? I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Is it appropriate to have that as what we're voting on, which isn't actually disclosing what we're voting on under the Freedom of Information Act? Yes, I do believe it is, Mr. Dumas. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Is there a motion to accept the recommendation of the town attorney? In the Wally Kadim, I rise to, to the, um, accept the motion for the town attorney. Okay. A okay, second by Phil Young. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All Aye. opposed? Nay. Okay. Thank. You. Okay. Next session. Uh, next. Next issue is uh, questions to the town attorney. <coughs> Would anybody like to start? We'll ask. We'll start with that end of the table. Move around this way. So I asked a question, Jackson. You said we go into special session with those negotiations for that contract for Shakespeare. If we wanted to add things, would we do that in an uh, executive session with you, or would, we more, would it be more appropriate to do that in front of the public? Would it be more appropriate to kind of just vote on motions? What would you suggest? Well, I'm not sure. I mean, you'd have to look at the specific circumstances involved. I'm not sure that you have the grounds to go into executive session unless there has been some type of written communication from the uh, town attorney to the council and, and um, it would disclose it and impede the attorney-client relationship. But I, I think you really need a specific factual situation to deal with to answer that question. So you said like if I was talking about lit litigation. What, I think what I would do is I think yeah. I would start it off out here and then if it looked like it was getting into areas which were uh, non-disclosable then request a, uh, to go into executive session. Okay. Okay, Mr. Llewellyn, did you have any questions? None at this time. Okay, Chase? None at this time. None at this time. Ms. Antezzo, do you have any questions for the town attorney? Mr. Young, Mr. Dumas? Yes. Um, uh, attorney LeClerc, you handled uh, two Freedom of Information Commissions for the town, uh, uh, docket number 2015-088, in 2015-079, is that correct? By numbers, I can't answer. I've handled it. There, there were two cases involving me as the Your, complainant, yes, correct? Yes, yes. And there were orders in those cases, correct? Yes, sir. Has the town complied with those orders? If you're talking about the tra FOI uh, training you're referring to? The, that is one of the two orders. Yes, I've had discussions with Mr. Hennick at the commission, and we will be scheduling now that you've all begun your term a training session. With when did you have those discussions? In the last 30 days. When in the last 30 days? I don't have my camera. I talked to Mr. Hennick two days ago. I, in December we spoke on this exact topic. Okay. Um, and then in 2015-079, some documents were supposed to be provided within 14 days. Is the uh, contract cell tower? Yes. The town is in the process of attempting to locate those documents. Thank you. Uh, the second question, we have three town attorneys here. Are, are we getting billed by the hour by all three of you for this meeting today? Mr. Dumas, I can answer that. 
The, uh, the way the office works is this. Um, the town attorney receives a stipend of $650 a month, uh, and that is to cover attendance at all meetings and um, the administrative work uh, in handling the town attorney's office. Myself, as an assistant town attorney, receives a stipend of $225 a month. That is for the purpose of um, attending any meetings that are necessary, uh, which uh, go beyond this council because usually uh, assistant town attorneys cover uh, land use boards, pension boards, ordinance committee, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think uh, I can safely say that there are no attorney's fees being paid for the fact that there are three attorneys here tonight. Thank you. Any other questions, Mark? Mr. Dumas? Not at this time. Okay. Mr. Kadim, any questions for the town attorney? I have, I have a couple of questions, actually. Um, when, it, when it comes to Shakespeare Theater, there's so much been going on with that. I know I've been fighting for it since I've been in the town. Um, it really is very important to be clear about the land usage, you know, um, and, and I, you guys spoke on it briefly, but I'm not going to take up this session for you to answer it. I know where your office is, so I'll just speak a little more with you at some other time. Also, um, this being a new council, we, we're really going to need just a big piggyback off of what our late Madam Chair said. We're going to need a heads up and paperwork to read about what we're voting on. We're not going to just vote on things just because they're on the agenda. We really need to know what we're voting on, else we're just going to say no to everything. I know I am. So I, I, I agree with you, uh, Mr. Kadim. I know uh, Chris Hodgson and Brian LeClaire do, too. I think some of the confusion this time was because it was the first meeting and nobody really knew um, you know, how it was going to be handled. Uh, so I can assure you that, that in, in the future, unless something happens at the very last minute, I'm sure that any attorney handling any matter will make sure that you get what you need in advance so that you at least can have some basic familiarity with what's going to be discussed that night. Thank you, sir. Okay, Mr. Hardin, do you have any questions? No questions, but I agree with uh, Councilman Kadim. Mr. Greska? No questions, but I also agree with Councilman Kadim. I agree with Councilman Kadim also, and I do have a question. I have two questions. Um, one is that in our budget workshops, we were told that monies were paid to the Stratford Stage Group of about $20,000, and we asked if those monies were a gift, grant, or a contract, and we were given the answer, gift. Uh, I would like to know uh, why monies were paid to the Stratford Stage Group if they do not have a contract, as we affirm today. So um, if you could track that down, I would be most appreciative. Second question, uh, uh, well, do you want to respond to that? Oh, you don't need a sponsor. We'll okay. come back to you with an answer. I, I don't know whether it was or, or whether it wasn't, but we'll find out and in, in report back. And second question, which I've asked uh, you, Mr. Florek, I just asked you on Friday, though, so it hasn't been long. Uh, when there are violations of the Charter of the Town of Stratford, Section 2.2.15, uh, which is the power to investigate and procure information, first, could you clarify how much time is a reasonable amount of time to get information from the administration, directors, uh, department heads, as the section says, it says appointed official, officer, director, department head, or employee, to furnish the council or, or its designee all information, contracts, reports, papers, documents, records, or other material which is in the possession of the elected or appointed official, officer, director, department head, or employee. Um, what's a reasonable amount of time when we, all of us, have asked for information uh, and um, sometimes we are not getting that information in what I think is a reasonable amount of time. I think that that depends on a case-by-case -case basis given the circumstances of, of, of not only what you've asked for, but of other events or, or things that are happening uh, within the town at that time. Sure. So the, the, the provision that you refer to, um, I was uh, the chairman of the Charter Revision Commission uh, in 2008 that adopted that provision. And the reason, the specific reason that that provision was put in the, uh, 
in the charter was because there were allegations that the, pro that the prior mayor had uh, refused requests from the council for information for months, uh, six months, eight months, uh, without uh, giving that information. So, so um, I, I probably wrote the language, although I don't really recall, but, um, uh, but the, 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 the game plan and the purpose was to, to make sure that there had to be compliance, that there was obligation on the part of the administration to provide the council with information that was necessary and reasonably requested by the council. I don't recall discussing any specific time frame. So the concept of reasonability is one that really depends on the circumstances. Yep. Uh, and um, I would say this, um, uh, I, I understand the council has asked for information. Um, I let the mayor speak as to what, what he's done to, pro to provide it, but the, the few weeks that we're talking about probably doesn't rise to an unreasonable period of time. Okay. So something like asking for a list of town vehicles along with the cost of the town of the vehicles and the rationale for the person to have a town vehicle. These are records that should be available, I would imagine, because we're giving people cars. Um, well, I, I would so say so. Two months ago, or I, the request was November 23rd, now we're at January 11th. That's a pretty good amount of time. I, I would say so that, you know, I don't know where that information's coming from. I don't, I'm sure it doesn't, it's not, doesn't, re, it's not reposed in the mayor's office, so it might be in finance, it might be in human resources, it might have something to do with contracts. I, I don't know. I, again, you'd have to find out specifically what the facts were and, and, and who's in charge of that information. Sure. And then when we ask for information, since we'll be putting in a lot of informational requests over the next couple of years, so yeah, it's just good to know uh, what we're dealing with here. Do we need to have the name of a document? Um, or can we just ask for a general you know, information on a topic. I, I would say that if you can identify a specific document, yes. Or if, if you can identify a specific topic, yes. If you just ask for, you know, any information you have regarding um, uh, pay scales for public works, then that's kind of an open-ended question, and I think it leaves a lot to the interpretation of the person that gets it. Um, if you ask specifically, uh, you know, I'd like to see the, uh, the contract or the labor decision that resulted in the, the, the fact that uh, this position in public works uh, received a retroactive increase. Well, that's a little bit easier to find. Okay. Does that, Mr. Yeah, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying, but um, the, the request that our council, Madam Council Chair, asked were very clear. Cars, that's easy. Um, I'm, I don't know, Mr. No, I'm, I'm, I, I don't know if it's easy or not. Well, I'm, I would hope that it would be if you have cars that you actually have money that you're spending putting gas in that you're insuring. That's money. That's come, that has to be um, definitely accounted for. That's why we went from, you know, uh, we went to a mayoral form of government so we can have accountability, and we need that. Also, when you have to look over a budget and you've never done it before in terms of for the council, you may do it for your own business because it's not as big as this, this town um, budget is. Uh, it's e a little easy if you had help from those who's already, who, who are already in the seat or someone who's being paid to do that job. And I don't think that's, that's unreasonable, and I don't think newly coming in council persons would know the, the proper jargon. So you would have to also guide us as well. So if, we, if I ask about the cars and, and, um, and, and how do you allocate cars and how much does it cost, and you, you tell me that's not worded correctly, tell me how to word it. But the reality is I still need the list for the cars. I, I, I understand what you're saying, but just to put it into perspective, again, <clears throat> I don't know, that, I don't know who, who you've asked and I don't know whether that information is uh, deposited in the, um, the, the mayor's office, or is it in finance, or is it in, in uh, human resources, or is it in, in any department where a supervisor is allowed to take home a car? So I don't know what it takes to gather that information. For example, I'm in the town attorney's office, as I've been in the town attorney's office for a long time, um, yet if you ask me about the Shakespeare matter, why? Well, really don't know anything about it. I haven't handled it. That's why I had to call Mr. Jackson up because he's the one that's been handling it. So in any given request, uh, it might seem like a simple uh, request, but 
It might not be. And so that's what I'm saying. You, you have to deal with the circumstances of each request to determine whether there's been a, whether there's a problem. I will say that I've always felt that things like a, a violation of the charter are um, almost akin to, say, a contempt of court where you have to show a willful disregard of, of, of the request and not, you know, any uh, non-compliance for any other reason. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Manis? I have a question about something different but the same, um, and I think you would be the one who would be able to answer it. If at-will employees were given letters of agreement for employment in our organization that said uh, stipulations regarding salary, regarding the um, availability of education funds for them to use, if the con uh, vacation, all of that, if those conditions were changed in any way, and they're at will, they're not uh, CBAs, would that be a violation of some kind of contract we have with that employee if we were to do a budget modification or things regarding those items? And you're talking just education. on, I mean, again, one of the dangers, lawyers will very rarely give you a definite opinion because, that. because <laughs> the answer depends specifically on the circumstances which, with which you're faced. Mm -hmm. And so what might be yes in one situation might be no in the other. And I can, uh, uh, Attorney Hodgson has ha handled the labor relations, so he might be better to answer this than me. But generally, generally speaking, if you've given someone a letter of engagement that promises them a certain benefit and then you unilaterally take that away, depending on the various terms of that agreement, you might have a problem. Uh, I, do you want to add anything to that, Chris? No. Okay. Thank you. If there aren't any more questions to the town attorney, I'd like to move on to questions to mayor or staff. Madam Chairman? I'm sorry? Madam Chairman? Yes. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Um, as you know, the council has been working diligently trying to, get Mike with him. Trying to come up with some um, ideas for mitigating the deficit. Um, I applaud you for coming out with your uh, proposal today. It's, uh, for my part, it's appreciated. Um, there's a number of questions that some of us have. And I'm going to attempt to ask the first one. You probably are going to want to have Sue Collier come up. Um, the first bullet in your press release is to reduce funding to the Medical and Workers' Compensation Internal Service Fund by $3 million. $3 million is a substantial portion of reducing that, that $5.4 million deficit. My question is this. It's coming from a line in the budget that started out the year at $13 million. The current balance is $6.5 million, or 50% of this money has been used this fiscal year. You're proposing to take $3 million from that $6.5 million, leaving a balance of $3.5 million. Last year, that account, the town spent approximately $7 million, I believe is the figure. Um, and my question may be somewhat uh, simple, but it will tell us a lot. And that is, if we take $3 million from this fund, will it leave this fund in a deficit come the end of the fiscal year? Thank you for your question. Um, let me just say this. I hear a lot of negative comments about the way things are being run in the town of Stratford. Things have never been better in the town of Stratford. So let me, let me start right there. Our parks have never looked better. Our services have never been delivered better. Crime has been down three years in a row. EMS is killing it or kicking it. Our fire department is an ISO rating rate two, which has never happened in the history of this town. Our pension is funded. Uh, the town roads are being paved, children are being uh, funded on the educational level, and with the help of our finance director, we've been able to shore up accounts in our budget, and there's several accounts that have been neglected over the years that we're looking at trying to build them up. It's hard to build things. It's hard to have success. It's easy to break it. It's easy to criticize it. It's easy to reject it. It's easy to say, let's change it. 
But try starting the job to actually do it, to complete a project to move the town forward. That is hard. It takes years. This doesn't happen overnight. It takes years. I'm sorry. The question had to do with reducing the funding in your first bullet point. Where is that money coming from? I'm answering the question right now. That's okay. where, I, that's where okay. I'm heading. What we did today is I had Susan Collier, our finance director, come in, and we went over the budget for some projections. And the thing about a budget is that it's a fluid document. It changes all the time. Things happen. Revenues come in. Sometimes they don't. Snowstorms come in. Sometimes they don't. So you're going to realize some upticks and some downticks. Susan came in and identified some areas. This is one fund that we've been building upon over the years. Susan, why don't you address, uh, Vin, give Vin a little bit more detail on that account? Sure. Actually, um, yeah, GASB re required that we set up an internal service fund, which we did, the Government Accounting Standards Board. Um, so we have an internal service fund specifically for medical expenses and workers' comp expenses. And so when you look at that budget of $13 million three and whatever last year's budget was, I think it was, might have been the same number, the entire amount is booked on a monthly basis. We take that money and we move it into our internal service fund. And then we pay our actual expenses out of that fund. So in the general fund, we, we know each year what our amount's going to be. So it's a, it's a better budgeting tool. But in the internal service fund, we can, we can absorb the fluctuation of, of bad years and better years um, with medical claims because we're self-insured and workers' comp because we're self-insured. So the HR director and I have worked on this for the last five years. Um, right now, our internal service fund is healthy. It's not fully funded, but it is more than fully funded for our current liabilities. What's not fully funded yet is something that you've heard me speak about recently um, in the last hour and last week. Um, we have long-term liabilities related to workers' compensation. Employees get injured on the job. Some of those injuries are minor, some are major. When they have a major injury, that the injury can last a lifetime. So we have to, we, each year we get an audit done we have all of our outstanding workers' comp claims assessed by an expert. They tell us how much our long-term liability obligation is, similar to a, an actuary that does for the pension. They estimate how long the people are going to live, what type of surgeries they're going to need to, to have a quality of life with an injury that they incurred on the job. That long-term liability is not yet fully funded, but, it, but the fund itself is in very good shape. By, by reducing our annual contribution to the internal service fund this year, I'm just suggesting that we reduce the speed with which we fully attain, until uh, the speed with which we attain full funding of the entire plan. But we have more than, we have enough money in there to cover our current expenses, like what we discussed this evening, mm -hmm. um, and we have money to pay our health insurance or, you know, our, our claims. But at some point, I'd like that fund to be completely funded so that each time we get an actuarial valuation and it says your long-term liability is 6 or $7 million of workers' comp, we can say, okay, we have enough money in that fund for that also. It's the same goal that we're going towards with our pension plan, which is currently 85% funded. We have a plan to get to 100% in the next 23 years, I believe. That sounds like a long time, but it's, it's a good plan. <laughs> And our OPEB is our other post-employment benefits. We have a plan to get that fully funded. And that's, that's the one that's out the farthest. But we're, what we're trying to do is balance our current fiscal situation with long-term health of the town. But at least we're, we have this fund set up as we were supposed to do per GASB. Um, we're managing it properly. Um, it, it, we can get into a lot of this in the budget cycle because we didn't get to talk about these departments during the last workshops. Um, but for now, this was a way to say, well, the most critical thing right now is to, instead of focusing on funding a long-term liability, I thought if we reduce that a little bit, it'll help our fund balance, which is based on current liabilities. So, thank you, thank you, Susan. Oh, and, and there's other so funds that, Susan, did, uh, that well, Susan had touched upon that um, could always use a little bit more 
and we've been adding a little bit more, but we're also cognizant of the fact that there's an affordability issue with the taxpayers. You can only do so much, so we've been doing it gradually to, to improve. But if we could do something that's not going to jeopardize an account, that's where we rely on the finance department for recommendations. So, okay. Let, let me ask, what is that? Just one follow-up. Oh, yeah, up. please. Um, you've made this proposal. Um, what are your thoughts if the council passed a resolution to adopt this proposal? I'm not saying all of my much just at this point only interested in the workers' comp fund. I, I think that would be fine. I mean, I, I propose that if you would want to adopt it, that's fine. Okay. Can I ask, uh, what is that fund balance now that we'd be transferring $3 million out of? Uh, How much is in Based it? On, on page 93 of the fiscal 15 audit, which I'm sure you guys carry around with you and I study it. on your free time. I've got it here. Um, <laughs> Together. Yep. Oh, and what's the fund balance? Hold on, it's not page 93. It's page 92. Mm -hmm. And that would be the that would be the addition of all those line items that say workers' that's comp that's on them on the munis, yeah, correct? That's what the balance is. That would be all of the addition of all of those. No, this is something. Oh yeah, I'll explain that in a minute. Okay. This is um, this was our assets are 10.4 million. Our liabilities are 3.2 plus, just give me a second here. I don't want to get this wrong. Yes, fiscal year started at 2.5. On a current liability basis, we have a, a, a positive fund balance of approximately $7 million, okay? But then we also have non-current liabilities on workers' comp of 7.8. So our fund balance is in a negative position overall for this fund, mm -hmm. but not on a current basis. Yes. On a current basis, we're doing well. On a long-term basis, we're not quite there yet. So that's why I was suggesting each year it's improved. That's why I'm suggesting this year, instead of taking as big a chunk out of the long-term liability as we had originally planned during the budget, I'm just saying to slow that down a little bit. Can I, can I ask, um, last year, what were the total assets in this fund? I, I didn't catch that. Last year, what were, not Ju uh, June 30th, 2014, what were the total assets in this fund? June, tw June 30th, 2015, it was 10.4 million. I don't have that in front of me, I, so I can get that to you guys. Unless it's, yeah, I can get that to the council. It's in last year's audit papers. I just didn't bring it with me tonight. I mean, it was I a get, similar amount of money for the year before? I can't hear you. Was it a similar amount of money from the year before as the year before? Year before. How come I, I, I'm not catching it? He's I'm asking, sorry. was it a similar amount of money? Oh, it was, um, no, the, it, it was actually an improvement in, in 15. Yes, we have been, like I said, it's, I know I'm using like cliche terms and I apologize, but each year we've, we've, um, we've managed to increase the fund balance, it, decrease the deficit in that overall fund. So even if we did move that around next year, you'd expect for next year that it would go back up to that? To well, I, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to show you guys a lot of numbers, but next year is, again, I want to definitely <coughs> do, make some type of um, improvement, but you guys have, we're going to have to balance a whole lot of things in the budget. But, uh, but we have more than enough to handle our current liabilities, so that's, that's really important. The last thing we want to do is not have enough money to pay our current bills. Right. Um, so to answer Ms. Manis' question, the line item that I discussed for $13.3 million for health insurance, that money gets put into the internal service fund. In addition to that, each item that you see in the contingency department for workers' comp, all of those dollars also get put into the to the um, internal service fund. So when you see that, you're, it's, when I say the budget, it, the actual is the budget, it's because we're moving that whole amount over to the internal service fund and paying the real bills out of a separate fund. How does that affect the employees that um, pay into it? Does that affect them? Do their insurance go higher? Do they have to pay more of a copay? How does that affect them? Uh, this, has, this is the town's liability. So employees uh, make contribution to the health insurance so that would be a revenue line item in the internal service fund it would be a slight offset to our expenses 
but the, but the liability is the town's portion of the health insurance. I, I just want to be clear because until tonight, I didn't see any of this. And uh, I know that we've been working very hard on this budget for over a month, trying to get some understanding for us new people who don't even understand all of this until you have someone like that. The fact that we had those workshops really helped us a lot. But, the, but we also needed the mayor who's been in seat for a long time to give us help. And this is the first time I'm hearing anything about money that's available. This is the first time I heard about that yep. at all. And, that, and that's not a good thing because we, if we're working together, let's work together. We are, we are working together. And that's why we brought it, this plan forward. But what, tonight is a little late because we're supposed to make decisions on this now. No, no, we done no, went no, through no, this I, for I, you weeks. Think I, you, no, I, I didn't ask that, nor did I ask to be, have it put on the agenda. I put it out as a plan. It's not on to, the agenda. These are questions, questions to the mayor. Right, to ask uh, questions. And, well, this and is questions to the mayor moment, right? I'm, I'm, not, I'm sorry to cut you off, Your Honor. I'm just uh -huh. saying I really want to be clear because I don't want to cut something that's going to hurt people. Right. People yeah. live off of their jobs. They work and take care of their families. I'm not going to make a quick decision just because a new piece of paper is in our face. We really need to come together, the mayor's office as well as the town council, to really get this yeah. right because we made decisions already, which you'll uh -huh. see going forward. So we really need to make decisions together. And oh. this was okay, too Ms. fast. Ms. Santeza? Well, I have another question for the mayor. It has to do with the unbudgeted monies from the WPCA to the amount of $580,000. And I'd like to know actually what that was from Susan <laughs> I just I have an amendment to that question because we were told in the budget workshops that we could not move money from WPCA to the operating budget no that's not what the suggestion is though. okay okay so what this is is within the general fund budget okay mm hmm there the the budget had $200,000 of pilot from WPCA, okay? Mm -hmm. So that number goes down. So that's a, that's a deduction in revenues. Then we have another deduction, a gain on sale of, of property, that was $600,000. So those two items um, of 800,000, those are things that we're not gonna realize revenues from. But the offset of those two items are the land use rent of $600,000, because we didn't include that in the budget. Oh, you did. And also, we did not, because we, we, the budget presumed that the sale was going to go through. So if the sale is going to go through, we're not going to get our rent, because we don't own it. And um, the overhead charge, the annual overhead charge of 300000 so that's 600 and 300. So that was $900,000. In addition, we have, I believe, four public works employees who used to work for WPCA and then the EPA or D DP, I don't know, one of those organizations, I apologize. Um, they told us we had to move those employees over to the general fund. They spend, I don't know how much, approximately a third of their time cleaning storm sewers. Some are water, some are, some are storm, some are sewers. So the work that they're doing, they're in the general fund, but they spend a certain amount of their time cleaning storm sewers. So we charge the WPCA um, for those services of $480,000. So that's another revenue that we're going to realize that was not in the budget. And then one last savings is in our expense side of the budget, we said we're going to have to spend $200,000 on user fees for town buildings. Because right now, the town doesn't pay itself to use the sewers. So that was another $200,000 pickup. So the net impact of all of those items I just spoke of is the $580,000. Okay, thank so you. So instead, you know, instead of it being a $5.1 million hole, the, the, the real hole related to WPCA is the difference between 5.1 and the 580000 The 4.86. So, but yeah, so it's a okay. Uh, I have a question. And, and oh, just one more thing: if we don't need action tonight, Mr. Keem, this is a suggestion from the mayor's office. If you guys are interested in this, I can present you with a resolution next month. It can be um, published; the, the public can comment on it, and you'll see all the line items, the ins and the outs. So. 
and, and but we are working with the rating agencies now. Um, we're preparing a, a plan. We're so we but to we we don't need to just pick up the phone and call them. We want to make sure all of our you know we have a, a, a really good plan in place before we we have that call, which is coming up in a few days so, or next week. So this is step one. So will we be getting the information in more detail? Sorry, thank you, Council Chair Person. Um, will, will we be able to get the information that you, you worked on um, yeah. so that we can have a better understanding going forward to compare with ours? There's a couple of things going on. I mean, uh, you, you know, there's, there's a lot of wheels in motion right now. What we're doing is trying to relieve the pressure. And, uh, you know, the, it's, we're not in dire straits right now. I mean, it, it's, it's reason enough that we have to take action. And I, we're doing it at a pace that we're confident that the information we give you, you'll be comfortable with. And that, um, you know, hopefully we'll have your support on it when we adopt or bring it forward. There'll be some other suggestions forthcoming, too, that we're working on. Um, and, and we'll give you the information as you proceed. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Duma. Mayor, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Kadim was. I'm still, I'm still looking at a few other things. Um, the, the expected uh, loss was, um, was supposed to be coming back. Actual was 4.5, and then actual was a deficit of 2015. Last year was the loss, and of 2.2 million added to the report, and it, and it was brought about from um, the attorneys' fees. We got 100, we got 1 million from there, and also the um, higher tax tax assessment which brought up the 2.2. Did that come through, or how did that go? I, I have no idea what you're talking about right now. I'm sorry. Uh, no problem. This, this is an idea that's, um, that, that we went over in terms of what was the deficit and how to fix it. Okay. So um, if there's a situation where you didn't spend money that you'll be putting back, um, I would like to know about the attorney fees also, as well as um, we were just speaking about the WPCA, the money that they didn't have to pay or they expected to be paid, but they had the money there. Right, that you're supposed to pay for the month if you had sold it, the 600,000. And you was also speaking a little bit about the VSA contracts WP services that was 480, or you mm -hmm. said it was 580. So I'm trying to understand, is that money gonna be recouped to go towards uh, clearing the def deficit or how does that move forward? The, the WPCA related items that we discussed is going to, because we still own the WPCA, and, and the, the biggest piece is because um, our public works employees are still cleaning the storm sewers, that and, and, and another $100,000 is what's going to get re, um, improved upon from the budget. Thank you very much. We definitely need to see that paperwork because we really, we lost. I need to see all of that. But what's Mr. right Duma? now, like in, in a month of uh, the next council meeting, to do budget transfers between departments, um, I, I will need your approval. Mm -hmm. But a lot, some of these other suggestions that the mayor is talking about, you know, he'll share with you as he goes on. Not everything needs to get, um, it's, it's not a financial transaction to, to take furlough days or to do other items that he's suggesting. But I'm sure the mayor will keep you guys abreast of whatever the ideas are. I'd like to ask another Wait, question. Wait, Mr. Dumas is next. Question about WPCA, if I might, uh, while we're on that topic. Who's talking? Mr. Dumas is next, please. Go ahead. Yep. I'm Ms. sorry. Mr. Mayor, you, your plan indicates that there'd be $580,000 received from the WPCA. That's correct? Yes. Um, based on our discussions with uh, the finance director during the workshops, and based on the review of many of the members of this council's uh, review of last year's budget and the FY15 budget, uh, it appeared that there's approximately $1.3 uh, uh, $1 million that had been transferred as of last year. So that was $300, which is just a straight-up transfer, 600 in land use, 480 in contractual services. Why are we only having 580000 transferred from WPCA versus the $1.38 million that we did last year? I think Susan touched upon that. Susan, would you drill down a little bit more for Councilman Dumas. I thought we already answered that, but. I thought we did too. Can, can I just interject? I think this is just about making the current budget more relevant to take into account the non-sale of WPCA. And right. so it's just reconciling the different transfers and then that, that did not occur 
and then adding in some money for, for to, to pay for public works uh, efforts in clearing sewers, sewer lines, right? Correct. So, Mr. Mayor, it has nothing to do with the unauthorized uh, uh, authorization of uh, WPCA fees to be used for the legal defense of the referendum? No. No, no this I doesn't. Yes, Ms. Manis. Hi. Hi. So <laughs> um, I have a question that's related to this, but you can rest easy. It's, it's, I have one question for you, though, before you go. <clears throat> I want to know the 6061 line item that's throughout the budget in each department for education. You don't have to give me the answer today, but I would love to know what the total, like if I collected all of that together and put it in a big pot, you would save me a lot of math. I teach English. I would really love it <laughs> if you could tell me how much that line item would be overall because it seems like it's dispersed in various degrees throughout the budget to different departments and how, how you decide what each department gets for education. Is that, you know, is that by person in the department, by their letters? What is that? Well, I'm, I'm flattered that you think I decide how much each department gets for education. I'm you sure you decide. actually decide that. I know. So, um, but I will, I will give you a summary of how those expenses have... I would just like to know what it is and what we have left because it's a lot of places where that 6061 comes up, that number, with the department. So I just wanted to know what that is. Sure. My other uh, comment question for the mayor is um, the... The frustration level that you felt and the um, level of emotion is good. It shows that you care and that makes me feel better. But this, when people talk about transparency, it's not that you didn't do a good job on this because you went to Tulsa and you know you have a BA in finance, you know what you're doing with finance. So you had the answers. And I think that when they're getting upset, they wanted you on the team. And we wanted you to be there with us. You, you didn't need to sit through all those meetings, I get it. But to be there and say hello, or to, when we were at the end of the night on Thursday, and Larry and Ron were there alone, and they were, and Sue was there too. You were there too. <laughs> we were all there. And they were trying to answer questions. And they wanted, we wanted to get to work. It was 1130 at night and we wanted to work. And it was Saturday and Sunday. I did nothing all weekend except look at numbers. That's why they're all memorized. And, you know, I have to try because people are counting on us to try. And so the fact that you tried today is awesome. But to understand that when people say transparency, it's not that they think you're doing bad things. It's they just want to see the process. How did this smart guy figure this out? And why couldn't he show it to us all together and teach us how to do it? When people see people do amazing things, it's just like EMS. How do you do it? How did you make that thing work? How did you make, how do you make those numbers work? You know, how did, you, how did that guy do that? Take us through the process, and you can educate people. Smart people don't like to work with other people. I get it. You say group work, I want to kill myself, all right, sometimes. All right, I get it. I've been in school. I just wish you could do more of that, and it's really hard to do when you already know what to do. But I think when people say transparency, I hope that you understand that that's what they're talking about. They don't want to, they just want to know the process. And it'll make you angry, and it's going to make you furious because people you might think people are against you, with that, but I think if you brought them into your process like you did when Mr. Chase asked you those questions and you walked through it, if you had done that Thursday, Thursday night, we would have had all weekend to look at this and we could be voting on it today. Thank you for that comment. I, I, first and foremost, I'm very respectful of this body as far as um, them running workshops and requesting information. It was a holiday week. Uh, you had a lot of people on vacations and of course you had long weekends. Mm -hmm. uh, we provide as much information as possible within the time frames. You know, you have to understand that, you know, everyone here works, they have different assignments, there's different projects, there's always something happening. And, you know, it's not like they're sitting just waiting for the phone to ring for a request. They can just do it with, you know, a flick of a switch or by snapping <coughs> their fingers. Some things are easier to get than others. 
it does take time, but I felt there was an urgency by this council to come up with recommendations. They want to dive in and educate themselves, and, and you need that education. There's no question about it. I was looking to do a slower approach to actually go through the budget process for next year and start identifying things that we, we could do. You guys were on a faster track, and there was a sense of urgency, and we complied with that. Out of all re respect, Madam Chair, um, I, I think it was a good idea that you, you um, felt an urgency. However, you know, we were on a different path, I guess. And I guess after I saw your email come yep, next week, I, that was when I was, I was like, you know what, I brought Susan in on, uh, this morning, and I said, let's, let's come out with some proposal to help to relieve the pressure, and knowing that you're going to have ideas here. And I'm, that, that was the intent. I'm sorry, I, I need to respond to that. On uh, December 23rd, I sent an email saying, I request that you, I sent an email to you, um, Mayor Harkins, I request that you and your office make suggestions before the workshops as to how the budget shortfall can be minimized. Not addressing the shortfall, not addressing the shortfall at all certainly puts the town at risk with the rating agencies. Uh, it is imperative that the government of the town of Stratford act responsibly and address the shortfall. Uh, I really got no response from that. And so I don't like hearing through a press release that is sent to me what your suggestions are. When I ask for something, December 23rd, it's now